kids miss kulkarni here let's continue with different types of chemical reactions and in this video we will talk about synthesis and decomposition but before that this is a reminder that there are five different types of reactions synthesis decomposition single replacement then we have double replacement and the last one is combustion so let's begin with the first one synthesis what is a synthesis reaction and how do we know that a reaction is classified as a synthesis reaction in this type of reactions we have two pieces that combine together and they form one piece or you can also say that it is like marriage between two people symbolically we can say a plus x they come together and they get married and we form ax as the couple also keep an eye on number of products if there is only one product it must be a synthesis reaction so let's take the first example here it is we are to write a balanced equation for the reaction which takes place between these two chemicals potassium and chlorine gas potassium is k and every metal will be in solid state so we can put s after potassium chlorine gas is cl2 it's one of the diatomic and it's gas what can kind a of compound will be formed can you guess it potassium forms potassium ion and chlorine forms chloride ion so the compound will be potassium chloride and the formula will be kcl we also need to find out the state for potassium chloride and using solubility chart we can also predict that group 1 elements where potassium belongs to all the salts from that will be always soluble so we are going to put that as aq now let's work on balancing the equation let's list the elements present in reactants and products that's only potassium and chlorine and then let's list the number of atoms of each element before we balance in order for reaction to be balanced we have to match the number of atoms so chlorine becomes 2 over here and if that gets 2 we have to make the product site 2 kcl if we make that potassium will be 2 atoms and then we come back to reactants we make that also as 2 and the answer is 2k plus cl2 giving 2 kcl it's a perfectly balanced equation now we also need to answer if the reaction is a redox reaction or not let's find out the charges on every single atom present in reactant and also in products the element by itself has no charge or zero as the charge so let's write down the charge on potassium that's zero the charge on chlorine is also zero but when we look at the product kcl the charge on potassium is positive 1 and charge on chlorine is negative 1 so what do we have potassium changes the charge from 0 to positive 1 and chlorine changes the charge from 0 to negative 1 the charge on potassium is going up and up stands for oxidation whereas chlorine charge is getting reduced so if it is getting reduced that must be a reduction so we have both reduction and oxidation in this reaction so reaction is definitely a redox reaction let's look at the second example now this example is little tricky what is given to you is not the reactant but it is given to you as the only product form remember again if there is only one product form the reaction must be synthesis reaction so let's write down the arrow and write down the product on the right side the product is iron 3 nitride if it is iron is fe plus 3 nitride means nitrogen is negative 3 the compound will be fe n and then that is given to you as solid so let's put s there now if this is the final compound what 
must be the reactants. Think about that. There are two different parts for the compound Fe and nitrogen. That means we have to begin with iron and nitrogen. Of course, make sure nitrogen is written as N2 because it is diatomic. Now, what will be the state for iron? Iron is a metal and that's why it will be solid. Nitrogen is a gas and then we already got the state for iron nitride. Alright, let's work on balance in the equation now. On the reactant side, we have two nitrogen atoms whereas on the product side, we only have one nitrogen atom. So, let's make that as two. If you make that two, iron becomes two atoms. So, we need to come back on the reactant side and make sure we have two Fe. And now, if you look carefully, we got two Fe on both sides. We got two nitrogen on both sides. The reaction is balanced. The question is, is this a redox reaction or not? Remember again, every element by itself will have a charge of zero. For iron nitride, it's given to you iron has a charge of positive 3 and nitrogen nitride will be negative 3. So, iron changes from 0 to positive 3 and nitrogen changes from 0 to negative 3. So, charges are changing for both the elements. Iron is getting charge increasing going up. So, it will be oxidation and in this case for nitrogen, the charge is getting reduced. So, it will be reduction reaction. So, that means the reaction will be definitely a redox reaction. Now, did you realize we worked on two synthesis reactions and both of them were redox reactions. Let's move on to decomposition reaction. What happens in this type of reaction? It's one compound splits into two or more pieces, just like divorce. So, think about AB is a couple. After divorce, A and B both become single individuals. How to identify a reaction as decomposition reaction? Remember, it will always begin with only one compound. So, you look for only one reactant and on the product side, you're going to get two or more products. Is that simple? Let's work on the example now. Write a balanced reaction for decomposition of solid lead to oxide by heat. This is also one more indication. Most of the time, decomposition takes place when substance is heated. So, let's work on that. Lead to oxide, the formula will be PbO. It's given to us as solid and now we are going to heat that. Heat is represented by a triangle on the top of the arrow. And what are we going to find out? If the compound splits into individual parts, that is going to be nothing but Pb and of course oxygen. Now, what will be the state for lead? It will be solid because it is a metal and for oxygen it will be gas. How do we balance it? We have Pb and O as two elements and these are the atoms before we balance. So, let us make the atoms equal on both sides. When we make the number of oxygen atoms 2 on this side, we have to go back and make 2 as a coefficient for PbO. If you change that, lead will have two atoms and now we need to go back to product side and make that as 2. If that becomes 2, we need to make sure on product side, lead also has 2 as the coefficient. So, there you go. We got the reaction perfectly balanced. Now, how to find out if the reaction is redox or not? Look at the charges. For lead, the charge is positive 2 because that is what is given to us and for oxygen is negative 2. Pb and oxygen both will have 0 as the charge. So, for Pb, the charge changes from plus 2 to 0 and for oxygen, the charge changes from negative 2 to 0. What is going on with lead? The charge for lead is actually 
reducing so that means it will be reduction and oxygen charge is going from negative 2 to 0 so it is going up it's increasing so it is oxidation so overall that makes the reaction a redox reaction let's take one more example of decomposition all right let's identify the reactants and products in the reaction it says that we are heating solid potassium chlorate so that's our reactant potassium is k and chlorate is clo3 negative 1 so potassium chlorate formula is kclo3 it's given to us as solid so let's put s there and then this is heated so for heat we are going to put the triangle on the top of the arrow and what are the products that is potassium chlorate and oxygen gas so that will be kcl plus o2 remember again it's a diatomic kcl is given to us as solid and oxygen you know it must be gas so there is our reaction now let's balance it and let's list all the elements present on both sides and write down the number of atoms before we actually start balancing so that's what we have so there we go now the next step is to match the number of atoms on both sides. here is one trick if you have one side odd number and other side even number always try to begin with that element and make the odd number into even so to make that odd number e into even i'm going to multiply 3 by 2 and get that as 6 so i have to have 6 oxygen atoms coming from reactant that means i have to make that 2 2 times 3 will give me 6 oxygen if i make that 2 kclo3 what happens to potassium i end up getting 2 atoms and same with chlorine i end up getting two atoms of chlorine now let's come to the product side since we have two atoms on the reactants we have to make this two if we make this two kcl must be two if we do that chlorine of course turns into two atoms and finally coming to oxygen let's make this six and if we have six atoms we have to put the three o two Alrighty, so we got perfectly balanced reaction. Now the next question is, is the reaction redox or not? I just wanted to check, how was our first reaction for decomposition? Was that a redox reaction? Yes. So chances are, this is going to be a redox reaction. But let's actually try. Oxygen by itself will have a charge of zero and in the compound, it will be negative two. So you already saw that there is a change in the charge for oxygen going from negative 2 to 0. If that's happening, definitely there is some element which will be also changing the charge. That means the reaction will be a redox reaction. So guess what? You already learned about synthesis and decomposition reactions, how to identify the reactions, how to balance and also how to find out if those are redox reactions or not i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you in next video until then bye bye